Number 29. For each of the following molecules, indicate the hybridization requested and whether or not the electrons will be delocalized. Okay, and then they tell us we have to do this for nitrogen dioxide, which is NO2, and we need to find the central nitrogen uh, hybridization. So whenever we're trying to figure out a hybridization, the, the best thing to do this is to always first draw a Lewis structure. Now I know that it's one extra step, but just visualizing what this molecule actually looks like will help you to find out the hybridization. So I'm going to do just that. Now this will kind of be like a quick inversion because we have tons of other videos on the channel that is just designated to drawing a Lua structure where we have the steps laid out for you on the screen and we go by one by one through the steps. But this will be kind of like, you know, a quick overview. So let's go. They already tell us that the central nitrogen is in the center. So in this case for NO2, I have one nitrogen surrounded by the two oxygens. Next thing is to just draw your valence electrons, right? Oxygen is in group 6A or 16 on the periodic table. So that means that there are uh, six valence electrons. So I'm gonna draw six valence electrons around each oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the nitrogen is in group 5A or 15. That's five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, right? So let's find this out, right? Single to single. So we have dot to dot, that's a single bond. Dot to dot, that's a single bond. And now let's see what's going on. So this oxygen, and it's got seven valence electrons. Two, four, six, seven. So it wants an octet, it wants one more electron. So we're going to make another bond dot to dot, that gives me a double bond. And now this oxygen is happy. Two, four, six, eight electrons. All right. Well, the nitrogen is also happy as well. Two, four, six, eight electrons. So that's good. The only issue here is that the nitrogen has two, four, six, seven electrons. Now, in this case, they did not say that we wanted the ion nitrite, which is NO2 minus one. And if it was nitrite, then I would be able to add that extra electron and this molecule or this oxygen in, in particular will have the octet. But this oxygen, unfortunately, we don't have enough electrons to give the oxygen its octet, which means that nitrogen dioxide is very unstable, right? So now all we have to do is just find out the hybridization of the central nitrogen. Now just know that there are five different types of hybridizations ranging from sp all the way down to sp3d2. These are just the types of orbitals that are overlapping to form the bonds, especially the sigma bonds. Now the hybridization is going to be linked up with how many letters are in the hybridization name. So for example, sp3, has one S and three P letters. That's a total of four letters. If we strip away one P, that becomes SP2, and that's three total letters. Now, the number of letters always corresponds with the number of things surrounding the element that you're talking about, in this case, nitrogen. And one thing is either a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond, so just because you have multiple uh, lines here, you still group it together as one thing or one lone pair of electrons. So let's see what nitrogen has. Well, the nitrogen has a single bond, so that's one thing. I see a double bond. I'm going to group that all together. That's one thing. And a lone pair. I can't use these lone pairs because they're not bound to the nitrogen. So this nitrogen has three things and three things, three letters, sp2. So this would be sp2 hybridized. Now let's talk about the second part of the question, which asks for, will these electrons be delocalized? Now, delocalized electrons is a fancy chemistry way for saying if electrons in this molecule, if they're free floating, right? 
delocalized electrons are not specifically bound to one element. They can swap from element to element. And we can tell if something is delocalized by seeing if we can draw another way of basically drawing this molecule. Now, in this case, I have a central nitrogen surrounded by two oxygens, but we chose to put that double bond on the left side. Could we have just swapped these two and said, hey, I want the double bond on this side. I want the single bond on this side. But if you do that, you just have to transfer that one electron over here. Basically, in essence, these oxygens swap places. And that would be a different representation. I'm just going to switch it back just to show you that we just swapped them. But that's the whole idea behind delocalization. Since I could have put this double bond over here and the single bond over here, those electrons and those bonds can shift. And that's what delocalization is all about. So will these electrons be localized? Delocalized? Yes. You do have delocalized electrons. And that's the answer for that one. And with that, it is the end of the video. What do you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. It's absolutely nuts that uh, this, this little channel is, is getting recognition from you guys. I'm so happy that this is helping you out with your homework and for test prep. So keep on studying, all right? Let's keep working hard, and I will talk to you in later lessons. Bye-bye.